Ernie, uh, welcome. Uh, I am Eric Barnes with the Daily Memphian, and welcome to this uh, live podcast of the Extra Podcast. Uh, today, we're talking about how Memphis will try to reopen, and we're specifically talking about some of the hardest hit businesses in Memphis, which were restaurants, which closed probably earliest and have been hit just so hard by this uh, closed this uh, shutdown. Um, Ernie Meller is president of the Memphis Restaurant Association. Ernie, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Eric. Uh, you are also a restaurant owner, um, so you're you're not just uh, an association president, but you're 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 living this. Um, I, I, how how have you just in your business? How have you hung on through this last six to eight weeks? Uh, it's been pretty tough for us, Eric. Um, I'm I'm strictly in the catering business, and uh, we we're probably one of the largest caterers in town. And in a matter of three days, back in the early middle part of uh, March, we lost six weeks worth of business off the books just scratched away and it was over well over a month's worth of revenue uh since then we've lost a lot more of that uh revenue that we already had on the books not to county on not counting on uh or, or, or thinking about the, the business that we would have booked you know day in day out right uh, right. what we have done is we have been delivering food and uh, we've been able to stay afloat uh, i have had to let all my employees go i did keep a core group of them and uh, we've all been working very hard to do what we do. Yeah. Um, and honestly, and I, you know, well, the catering business is, and a lot of the restaurants in town do catering, and, and, and then other folks like you who are, are just caterers, not with the restaurant. Um, yeah, the prospects of big group meetings coming back together, even though they're talking about limited reopenings of restaurants at 50% capacity and so on, there's, there's not a lot of business. Uh, tourism right now there aren't a lot of weddings there aren't a lot of uh, gatherings of any sort yeah you're, you're exactly right and um, uh, you know that's that's the challenging part for us right now is you know how are we going to navigate that because you know we've had weddings cancel uh, the the corporate world is working from home they're doing what we're doing right now we're doing they're zooming and uh, a lot of the 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 conferences that would normally that we would normally be helping out on or, or, or have a piece of their business um, is, uh, you know, is going to go by the wayside for several months, if not through the end of the year. Uh, so we're, we're reaching back out to, to all of our clients, both corporate and, and individuals and saying, hey, when the green light goes for restaurants, you know, we want to do some kind of party with you. We want to do your backyard barbecue yeah. like, like that's how we started. Uh, so for for that, for the catering side, for us or any restaurants that are doing catering, it, it'll be a challenge. Um, the, the let's maybe in rough numbers, um, the number of restaurants and catering companies in Memphis, and the number of employees that they they, and again in rough numbers, the scale is is bigger than I think a lot of people think. So in 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 Memphis and Shelby County, there are forty nine thousand um, restaurant and and hospitality uh, employees. Of that 49,000, 37,000 of them are restaurant-related uh, employees. Now, that might be a restaurant in the, you know, could be the Capriccio Grill in the Peabody, uh, but still restaurant employees. Um, there are somewhere around 2,000 restaurants in Memphis and Shelby County. Uh, we have about a little less than 250 restaurants uh, as members of the Restaurant Association. Um, with that being said, I will, uh, I'd like to say that we are offering a 90 day free membership to the MRA uh, for any restaurant out there that's not a member. Um, you need to be a member. We keep you informed, particularly in the last two months, we've, and I've been working my tail off, uh, you know, disseminating information to coming from all different areas, from the, the mayors and the, and, and the governor. I actually sat on a governor subcommittee for the economic recovery, his economic recovery group slash task force on opening re uh, on reopening the restaurants and uh so i've been pretty close to this whole deal but uh, uh we'd love to have more restaurants in our association do you um agree with the the the, the phased approach i mean i'm sure you know economically it's not the perfect situation but does the does the phased approach of opening it i think it's 50 percent capacity with you know, a fair amount of protection for, for workers and, you know, paper plates and no shared salt and pepper shakers and that and no shared utensils. Does that uh, seem reasonable? Uh, it does. The, 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 the part that, you know, over a period of time, the phase in is smart. Um, 
we actually on the governor's subcommittee were recommending 50 uh, 50 percent capacity for two weeks 75 percent capacity for two weeks and then moving to full capacity um and, and let me let me talk about that just for a second sure. um most most restaurants their models at least pre-covid um you didn't break even in, unless you filled 70 percent of your seats in that restaurant you know on any given day um, so at 50% uh, capacity, these restaurants are going to be, you know, probably run more than likely running in the red. They will be running in the red. So the longer you pro the longer you, you keep that out there, the more money they're not making or the more money they're losing, however you want to look at it. Um, the other factor is, you know, how willing and ready will the public be to jump back in to the restaurant scene? Uh, you know, our hope is that, that well, our, our fact is that we want to open safely and we want everybody to be safe and we want the customers back as quickly as we can get them in a safe manner. Um, yeah. But I'm telling you, we're, we're bleeding in it. It's, it's hurt. It's hurting. We're down to one lung or a half a lung and, and you know, the, the bleed is still, still happening. So we're ready to go. Yeah. Um, um, do you also worry too, I mean, the, um, well, I mean, one, you know, it's, it's interesting to go back and look, the, the restaurants were starting to close before they were ordered to, in many cases, because of exactly, they were losing, they were losing, you know, um, patrons who were nervous about being in public spaces. And so again, yeah, will they even be able to fill up that 50% capacity when they're allowed to offer it? Um, I think is a huge question, obviously a big concern. And the second is, is, is it the same, you know, people go out to restaurants for different reasons. It might be just utility and pragmatism of just it's quicker and I can run in there and get some food and then I'm off or it's an experience right I mean and it's the food and it's on and, and if that experience is a kind of half empty restaurant workers in masks does that also um, uh, diminish people's desire to go out to a restaurant um to answer your second question I I, I think that I think the folks that enjoy eating out will go out for the experience uh, does it diminish that you're only, you know, that you're six feet apart or there's only 50% of the, the, the capacity in there to an extent, but uh, it's going to be, it's going to be really up to the restaurants, the restaurateurs and their employees to re-engage with their, with their customers and make it, a, make it a good experience, um, wow. you know, and, 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 and make it that experience that they're used to. Um, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting old. If you rephrase the first part of that question, that would be great. Uh, no, no, that's okay. One thing I want to I want to touch. You know, that's you got to what I was talking about. I mean, and, and there are you know part of what's so crazy for everyone in this situation is the lack of clarity. There aren't you know we we're just figuring this out on a day to day, week to week basis. So no, you you certainly answered my question. Um, just for people who aren't following this as closely as maybe you and I are, um, the, the city and county have released and the, the suburban uh, municipalities have released this back to uh, business um, framework and set of, of, of goals. It's at, uh, you can just search, you know, back to basic, or excuse me, back to business Memphis, and you'll find the site and it lays out for each type of business in Memphis, restaurants and bars very much included, the, the, the phasing, the three-part, four-part phasing that, that will happen. We're in, quote, phase zero right now, where it's just, just carry out and delivery. The phase one that the city, county, suburbs have, have indicated they are, they're about ready to move into um, means the 50% capacity. And there are, like you talked about the governor's task force and, 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 and making the case for two weeks at 50%, two weeks at 75% and so on. Instead, what the, the city and county rolled out is a phased approach where they go a couple weeks, assess the data, assess the number of cases, and maybe make a decision to go backwards or to go forwards and just stay where they are. That, um, I, I mean, I, I, not that anyone cares, but I personally get that. I get why they want to take it sort of as they go. But boy, to run a business with that level of uncertainty is just got to be incredibly difficult. Man, I'm, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, it, it's, it's super tough. And, and honestly, the, the hardest thing for everybody right now is the indecisiveness. Uh, we've been listening to Mayor Strickland and Mayor Harris pointing back to the health department, uh, Dr. Haushalter, and giving her the, the, the reins. And then yesterday she flipped the coin on them and said, 
it's not up to me now. It's up to our elected, elected officials to give us a date. Well, guess what? We need a date. We don't have all of our employees in place. Um, if we open and, and, you know, so we've got to do the rehires or bring them back, bring them back our folks. We have to restock. I don't want to restock a bunch of, a bunch of uh, perishable foods. If, if I'm not opening in four or five days or eight or 10 days or whatever the time is, and then you get into the whole supply chain issue. So yeah. it is crazy what the mayors are doing and I'm calling them out right now. And I'm, I'm, I know them both, but we've got to have a date in order to, to prepare our businesses to do what, do what we need to do. And granted, we're all not going to open our doors at eight o'clock on, you know, that day. Um, and, and some will choose not to the downtown, the downtown folks, um, I think will open slower because they don't have the, the, the auto zones and the service masters and, and, and all the, the tourists downtown. So the downtown guys have probably hurt worse than, than the folks maybe in East Memphis or in the suburb. Um, but man, we need a date. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. on a date. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Let me let me do this. Let me take a quick break, um, do a quick sponsor message and come back and follow up some of what you just said. It, um, a reminder that this podcast is brought to you by FedEx. Possibilities, what we deliver by delivering. Uh, also a reminder that the extra podcast is one of many weekly podcasts we do at the Daily Memphian, including podcasts on food with Jennifer Biggs, who I'm sure Ernie knows well. Uh, the po- Behind the Headlines podcast, uh, podcasts on politics. And in normal times, we do a number of podcasts on sports, but I imagine someday we'll get back to those. All of our podcasts are on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, this notion, I mean, you touched on a number of things I want to follow up on. Um, and, I, and you know, I hate that we're being so negative, but it, it is what it is, right? I mean, this is a very difficult situation. Just the, the prospect of, of tourism restarting, let alone sporting events, um, you know, concerts, it, it seems so far away. And you brought up the downtown businesses, which are particularly downtown restaurants, which are particularly hard hit by that. Um, you know, you think of a restaurant like the Majestic that is right in the sweet spot of FedEx Forum, of lots of businesses during the week, of, of the Orpheum down the street. Um, we have no clarity uh, on when big mass gatherings will be allowed again. Yeah, so the, the first one on the calendar uh, that's coming up and 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 the PGA and, and Daryl Smith and his team at the World Golf Championships are, are, are talking with the mayors, and I, I'm saying mayors plural, uh, yeah. about that because they have to give the thumbs up to this and to have spectators. So the first four PGA tournaments that are, that are going to be played are without spectators. And you're exactly right. All of these, all of these events drive people to restaurants. And, um, you know, it, that's what drives the economy. Eric? The hospitality industry is the second highest genera- uh, tax income generating industry in the state. Uh, in, the, in Shelby County, we're around four or five uh, because you have people like Service Master and International Paper and FedEx and, and, and the rest of them. Um, and we, we, we employ a third, of the, a third of the people across the state. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and we've, been, we've been smashed. And, and I know everybody's hurt. I mean, I've, you know, I've, I've yeah. got friends taking 50 percent pay cuts working for a big corporation yeah yeah no and, and and yeah i know and i know you say that and you're good to say that is this is one that's so visible and was so hit so early and hit so people kind of how and where they live in terms of their coffee shop or their bar or their restaurant um do you think oh l- let me mention this too that the the pay t- paycheck protection program loans the ppp loans that the sba administered um the first round closed a week or two ago the new round just opened um the ppp loans and full disclosure you know uh, the daily memphian got one lots of small businesses and medium-sized businesses frankly have gotten them um are you hearing and, and jennifer biggs did a really good story today about the complications and difficulties of the ppp loans even for people who managed to secure them in a difficult situation and it's worth a read again it's focused on restaurants but i think it's emblematic of a lot of what small businesses are dealing with they, the way those, among other things, the way those PPP loans work, it's you get it all as a grant, i.e. you don't have to pay it back if you keep everybody hired. But if you don't know when you're gonna open, you can't hire the people back necessarily. I mean, it's just, 
it's not a saving. It's it's better than nothing, but it's not a saving grace. Those PPP loans. Yeah, Eric. That I mean, the 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 government. You have to give them a, a at least a, a small round of applause, but not a big one, for putting the thing together in you know two or three weeks' time. Um, it because of the sixty day time frame that you have to hire seventy five percent of your employees back uh, in order to get make that a forgivable loan is is really unrealistic i mean it's truly unrealistic um uh, for most now not everybody but for most um i was was not going to apply for it i did i did get the money um i'm using it as a safety net i will not be able to hire 75 percent of my people back before june before uh, june 30th um i will turn most of that money back to the bank after that point in time but again i'm and, I, and then the, then that money turns into a loan for me uh, yeah. at one percent. And I'm not I'm probably not the only guy in that in that boat. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you did you have a sense of your membership or just the broader restaurant community that the the percentage you were able to get them? A lot of small businesses were not able to get them. Um, uh, did you have any sense of how, how it worked out for restaurants? As far as percentage wise, is that yeah, you're yeah. I mean, did, did, I mean, again, you wouldn't know specifically, and I understand that. But you, no, I don't know that. To, okay. Yeah, I don't know that. If I were to guess, I'd guess it's less than ten percent, but I could be wrong. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about you know again looking forward and looking forward more hopefully to you know not just having fifty percent capacity, but one hundred percent capacity and more of the economic life of tourism and businesses that feed restaurants happening. What of, of the many changes that have happened to the restaurant industry, what, what which of those changes do you think um, will will stay in place? I mean, the the huge increase in delivery and takeout, um, the you know what else? You know, it, drinks to go that you can get drinks to go in Shelby County, Memphis, and Shelby County now. Um, people I know out of state think that's the craziest, most wonderful thing they've ever heard in their life. Yeah. I mean, well, some of these, I mean, they got to find some joy in this 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 situation. Do you think some of these changes will stay in place uh, ongoing? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, the the to go drinks are, are here here through the end of May. Um, Texas is already pushing legislation to, to make it permanent. I think you'll see legislation here. It won't happen. Uh, that we'll we'll try to get it through, but it won't happen in this session. I've already talked to our uh, our lobbyists uh, with Hospitality Tennessee, and it just it just not going to happen in the near term. It may happen in the, in the future. And honestly, that, that, uh, uh, that little piece of the puzzle has kept a lot of guys afloat, honestly. Um, delivery and takeout, I think you'll see an increased demand for that, absolutely. Um, and I think that uh, the restaurateurs will embrace that. Uh, I think everybody's having to revisit their model. They know it's not going to be the same as before. I think you'll see uh, folks continue to wipe down surfaces and do the sanitation, um, you know, once we get up and swinging and, and, and moving again. Um, but uh, I think it's, I think it's going to be a, hopefully not a, not a crawl, but a, a, a walk to get into a jog to get into a, yeah. you know, yeah. a, a faster paced deal. Uh, one quick thing before we go that I think a lot of people aren't aware of, a lot of the delivery services, the kind of third-party services, take pretty um, steep fees. Um, I mean, I know I have friends who run restaurants, own restaurants, who some thinking again pre-COVID, who didn't do it at all because the fees were so bad. Others who did it just to kind of keep. It's almost an awareness-building activity. Um, do you do you think? I mean, how do restaurants deal with that now, and how in in, in the future? It's it's it's. Restaurants operate on pretty thin margins anyway. And when you've got these third party services taking such big chunks of money, what's the future of that? Um, you know, they're taking anywhere from 24 to 30% <clears throat> off the top. So if you buy a cheeseburger and fries for $10 and it's delivered to your door, uh, $3 that goes to Uber Eats or whoever it is, DoorDash or whomever. And then that leaves seven for the operator. Uh, so that really does cut into his, his, his margins because, uh, um, at the end of the day, we're we're making anywhere from six to twelve, and maybe fifteen percent if you're lucky. Um, if you're real lucky, um, 
I think they're viable. I think those those entities are viable. I think the smart restaurateurs will try to figure out how to deliver themselves. I mean, we're delivering ourselves. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, but you're right. There's a marketing presence uh, uh, with with those yeah. uh, third party deliveries. Yeah. All right. Cool. We uh, are out of time. We'll leave it there. Ernie, thanks for joining me. Good luck with your business and uh, and such a, a difficult time. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you, Eric. I enjoyed being here. Um, the, a reminder that this podcast is brought to you by FedEx Possibilities, what we deliver by delivering. And be sure to subscribe to the Daily Memphian on the site for unlimited articles. All of our COVID articles are free, but uh, other stories we're doing, um, we, we hope you will uh, pay to, to get them. Um, and again, subscribe to this weekly podcast. Uh, we're available on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for joining us.